Thanks for joining us today. We really hope that this ministry has impacted your life and blessed your heart. And if it has, we would love to hear your story. Send us an email. Tell us about you. Send an email to stories at edgewaterchurch.com. And also, if you'd like to partner financially with this ministry, you may do so at our website, edgewaterchurch.com. Or you can download the app through the iTunes Store or through Google Play. Again, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for watching today. Now prepare. We're in the third week of a series called Blessed. Let me hear you say blessed. blessed. All right. I want to start today with a, with a study. Somebody's always studying something, coming up with some kind of research. And so there was a group of folks that wanted to study and research um, how much it would take, how much do Americans need to be happy? How much do they need to feel blessed? And I'm sure you can probably guess that the responses kind of all boiled down to, um, we just need a little bit more. <laughs> you know, that, that's kind of just the way, the way we are. They ask people who are making around $20,000 a year or so, how much do you need to be happy? And they said, well, if we had, if we had $35,000, we would, we would probably be happy. And then they asked people who had $35,000, how much would it take for you to, to feel like you had what you need, to feel that you would be happy? And they said, well, maybe about $50,000. And fifty dollars led to seventy, dollars and seventy dollars led to uh, $100,000. And I'm sure you could even ask folks who make a couple of million dollars a year, and, and they, they would say, you know, I could use just a little bit more. I'd feel better with a little bit more. And to be honest, if I looked at my life, and there, there would have to be times that I would say, you know, I don't, I don't feel like I have enough. Um, and that, I know it's dangerous to speak on your behalf, but I would imagine there are many of you here today who would say that same thing. You know, if I had just a little bit more, I just don't quite have enough. Um, so, you, so I don't have enough, you don't have enough, we don't have enough. But the, the reality is, we have way more than enough. And now... Some of you may be saying, well, Dan, you don't necessarily know my situation. You don't know what I'm living in, what I'm living through. You know, I don't, I don't have that much. Uh, but I would, I would encourage you to take a second and uh, broaden your perspective uh, beyond your own setting to, to some places in our country, to even, of course, some places around the world. And I think if you saw how some people live in this world, you would come back going, wow, I really have a lot. I, I really have everything that I need. I have way more than enough. So let me just kind of do kind of an experiment here today to kind of help illustrate this. How many of you would say that at your home today you have, you have enough food for today and probably enough food for tomorrow? Raise your hand. All right, most hand, most, just about every hand up. Okay. Uh, how, many of you, how many of you have like at least one bedroom in your house? All right. Flushing toilets. Not so many with the flushing toilets. Uh, okay, that's a surprise. Outhouses, yay. Um, uh, so air conditioning, you know, you got, you got all that. Okay, how many of you have at least three outfits? Yeah, how many? 300 outfits? No, I'm just sorry. I won't make you raise your hand for that. But, uh, you know, we, we, we have more than enough. And so what I want you to do, start off today, I want you to repeat after me. I want you to say, God is my provider. God is my provider. I have more than enough. God is my provider. I have more than enough. When we recognize this, when we, when we understand it, when we believe it, when we embrace it, when we, then we understand this blessing that we have. And so what I want you to do in the bulletin, there's a place you can write down some notes. I encourage you to, to do that where it says message notes. Write down the points and some of the scriptures that you can kind of take with you a little bit later. Um, so here's kind of the main point, the main idea for today, and that is this, is that God has blessed us to be a blessing. That God has blessed us to be a blessing. You can go and throw that up there if you will. All right. God has blessed us to be a blessing. Now, um, Jesus talked a lot about the idea of being blessed. Um, in, uh, he's quoted as saying this in Acts chapter 20, verse 35, where it says, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, the problem is most of us don't believe that. That we, that we don't believe that to be true. And how do I know? Well, because I'm looking out over the group today, and I can see your faces. And I, I can see that there are many of you that are sitting out there going, Daggone it, Dan's going to talk about giving today. I should have skipped church today. You know, 
But if, but if you believed that it was more blessed to give than to receive, I'd be looking out and we'd have shining eyes and people would be like, yes, we're talking about giving today. This is awesome. I'm so excited. I love giving. This is the thing that just gets me so, so excited and revved up. I'm just so thankful I made it today. I can't wait to hear a message on giving. But, but most of y'all are like, bummer, you know? But it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Over the past few years, that's something Shaney and I have been really praying about and trying to grow in our lives, working for more ways that we can, we can be generous in our life. Um, I love when God blesses us and then we have an opportunity to, to receive it with open hands and be able to then turn around and bless somebody else. Uh, we've had, we, periodically, we've had a couple of times where, where money has showed up that we didn't expect and so what we do is we're, we, we pray. We say, okay, God, how can we use this? What can we, what can we do to give somebody else a surprise or maybe do something anonymously for somebody to, to just help and bless them? Since you've blessed us, we want to turn and bless others. There are times that we'll get a gift card. Maybe we'll get a gift card for 50 bucks at a restaurant or whatever. And we'll, our meal will be 25 and, and then we'll just, we'll just leave the gift card there and just say, hey, you can, you can have this. So 100% tip. So, so that's a, I, I love when we can do that. Now, Please hear me. I'm not, I'm not saying any of that to go, hey, look at us, we're generous, because that's not at all what I'm saying. Please, please hear me say that. But it, but it is more blessed to give than to receive, and so I can only speak from my, my examples of how I've experienced that in my life, because I know there are many of you that you do the same types of things. You, you have that kind of uh, generosity. You've lived in that. You've grown in it. Heck, y'all are the ones who gave us the gift card. So, um, so, I mean, you've experienced it, too, that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. God is our provider. We have more than enough. You are blessed by God to be a blessing. So let's take a second. Let me show you what happens then when you are a blessing. The Apostle Paul was writing, and he was writing to a group of people who were very poor, but they gave big. And so uh, let's read about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13, where it says, Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. So what it's saying is that your generosity can help point people to God. That, that because in, in times that you are generous, people will see either the, the generosity or they'll see the results of the generosity, and people will say, praise God. That's awesome. And so, so people are then turned to God through generosity. You could be a generosity evangelist. See, you, you don't have to have all the right words to say. You don't have, the right, have to have the right materials to hand out. Sometimes just through your generosity, people get a chance to have their hearts turned to God. So let me take a second and, and talk for a minute about uh, three big blessing mistakes because it's important for us to have kind of this foundational understanding as we talk about this. Three, three big blessing mistakes. First of all, some people, they simply ignore the blessings of God. They ignore the blessings of God. They don't acknowledge them. Because uh, all of us are blessed in so many different ways. A lot of times we just kind of take some things for granted. But, but there are some folks that they'll be very, very blessed. And yet they're whining and complaining all the time. Because, oh man, my neighbor got the nicer BMW. Or, oh man, my Mercedes is in the shop. And, uh, and they, they just can't believe this is happening. And, oh no, my, my third air conditioner is broken and the guy can't get here till Monday. And so I won't be able to go into my fifth bedroom because it's too hot in there. You know, they, they, they just ignore the blessings of God. Another mistake that people make, instead of ignoring, they apologize for the blessings of God. They apologize. It's almost like they're embarrassed by him to a degree. God is the one who gives wealth. God is the one who blesses. These blessings come from God. And then sometimes people act like they are embarrassed by him. Some of them will say, hey, man, you have a really nice house. And you'll go, oh, yeah, we got a really good deal for it. We didn't really pay very much for it. And they kind of try to minimize it, back away from it. Hey, that's a really nice shirt. Oh, yeah, man, it was 50% off on the clearance rack, you know. And, and we, we, we kind of stay away from it. It's like you're embarrassed by the blessings of God. A third mistake, though, is that some people hoard the blessings of God. Some people hoard the blessings of God. Here's, here's a tragic statistic. Studies have shown over and over and over again that the less people have, the more they give. And they've done sh studies show consistently that in our country, the less people have proportionately, the more they give. And, and, I, and so, of course, the, the opposite of that is, is true as well. And that the, the more people have, the smaller percentage that they actually give. And certainly God must be looking at us and just saying, what, what were you thinking? 
Did you, did you miss the point? Did you think it's all for you? Yes, I gave you this, and I want you to, to enjoy some of it. I want you to use some of it for you. But do you think I gave it all to you for you? I mean, come on, I gave it to you so you could bless others. Because you've got more than you need. Receive the blessing with open hands and share the blessing. You are blessed to be a blessing. Uh, so let's embrace it. Let's not be embarrassed by it. Let's talk about giving big. Now, I know um, a lot of times in the church world we talk about the word tithing. Um, tithing refers the the act of kind of giving back to God 10% of what he's given to us. We read about that in Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30, where it says, One-tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain from the fields or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord and must be set apart to him as holy. In Malachi chapter 3, it talks about bringing the tithe to God. And so, um, and so it, if it was ours, we would give it. But since it's not ours, it's God's, we, we were bringing it back to him. Okay? Um, but today, I don't want to get hung up on the word tithing. Because I know sometimes the word tithing, like it, it just triggers people. And, and they, they kind of they get all worked up about the tithe. And their brain starts chasing off in all kind of different directions. And they're like, man, does God really mean... 10% of everything, and wow, well, my, I can really only do 5% or whatever. I, I can't really do a percentage. Is, is the 10% off the gross or the net? And I always, I always think, well, do you want to be blessed off the gross or the net? Um, so um, what, about, what about the differences between the Old and New Testament? And I, I actually, in doing research for this this week, I read an article titled, Seven Reasons Christians Shouldn't Tithe. And I, it, it talked about giving, but it, it just listed all these things. And so I know sometimes our brains go in all sorts of, of different directions. And, and sometimes we use it as an excuse. And we say, well, you know, I don't understand all that stuff about tithing. And, and I, I don't really think I could do 10%. So I'll just do nothing until I get it all figured out. Well, I'm removing that excuse today. Okay? I, I'm removing that roadblock from us today. We're just going to talk about giving. Because um, I, I think he just wants us to give. I think he wants us to give joyfully, to give sacrificially, to give regularly, to, to give faithfully, listening to the, the Holy Spirit, to give with a generous heart. God calls us to give. He wants, he wants to show us his faithfulness. Now, we've got to remember in all this that God is the originator of it. What, what, is it, what does it say? For God so loved the world that he what? He gave, he gave. God initiated the giving. He pours blessings into our lives and he gave the, the sacrifice of his own son Jesus so that we could be forgiven of our sins and be restored into relationship with God. God initiates the giving and then, and then we need to be faithful in, in responding. We want to model his character and be able to live that out in, in our lives and be giving as well. And the great thing about it is, so not only do we get the blessing from this end that God pours into our life, he's waiting to bless us on the other end as well. That when we're faithful, he, he says this in Malachi 3.10. He says, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. We talk about this all the time, that this is the only verse in Scripture where God is saying, test me. I'm good for it. Put, put me to the test. I'll show you how faithful I am. And so we put our little faithfulness in, and then God is just like waiting to pour out the blessings. Now let me dial it back a second and make sure you understand that we're not talking about uh, uh, prosperity gospel or anything like that. I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, if you put a $20 bill in the giving box today, God's going to give you $100 within 24 hours because that's stupid. And so I'm, I'm, not, I'm just not saying that, okay? I, now, now, could God do it? Yeah, he could. Does he do it? He does it sometimes. But I, but I don't think that it's, a, it's a, an exact equation like anything like that. And sometimes the blessings that we receive are, are some things that could be maybe a little more intangible. But, but God promises blessing beyond what we can imagine. He wants us to test him. And, and he's waiting to bless us. And if we're not faithful to respond, we miss out. All right, so let's take a second to look at how it is that we are blessed to be a blessing. Number one, again, if you're taking notes, write this one down, is that we are blessed by God to give joyfully. Let me hear you say joyfully. 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 We are blessed to give with an overwhelming sense of joy. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, it says, Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. 
You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. In other words, if you give a little, you'll get a little. Again, we're not talking like a, a, a ratio of, of giving like that. Um, but, but whoever sows generously will, will reap generously. Right? It's, it's the principles of God. It's God's economy. That's just how it works. And, and this word for, for cheerfully in the original Greek, it could also be translated as hilariously. So there's this overwhelming, just effusive sense of joy there that, that you, you're like, woohoo, I get to give. And, and, and to have that sense of joy to it, that it's like the greatest thing ever because I am blessed, I get a chance to turn and bless others. Um, I've gone to churches sometimes where they take that really seriously. So it's like when they get to the point where they um, are, are taking the offering and they're passing the offering baskets. Man, it, there, there's a party going on. They're hooting and hollering. They're high-fiving each other. They're just so excited. It's a party because they get to give, and that's the exciting part of the service. They take that seriously, that joyful, hilarious giving. I think at some level it's the difference between immaturity and maturity. Immature people want to receive. We want to be consumers. We, we want to get. People who are mature in their relationship with God, they love to give. Now, when I was a kid... I was immature, some would say, still am, but I'm, we, we won't go there today. So, so when I was little and immature, what was Christmas about? Me. It was about what I could get. I filled out my Christmas list. Uh, oh, gosh, I'm dating myself. I went through the Sears catalog and circled and dog-eared the pages and all that and, you know, threw that out there. And, and, and I want, I'd count the presents and make sure I had at least as many as everybody else. And, and, you know, it was all about me and what I could get. But now as a relatively more mature adult, um, what do I get excited about? I get excited about giving. I love it when my kids' eyes light up and when they get a chance to, to, to get the presents. I love when you, you can give that present to a family member and they open up and, it, and they didn't even realize they needed it until, until they opened it and they're like, yes, that's so cool. I love being able to give like that. It's fun to give. You've been blessed by God and you have more than enough and you have the honor to give joyfully. So part of maturing and growing as a disciple of Jesus is growth in recognizing that everything that we have comes from God. And we get to manage what God has given us. And then as we follow Jesus for a longer period of time, we get a better sense that everything I have is a gift from God and I need to be willing to use it for him. Uh, when I was in college, my dad brought home a, uh, a 1968 powder blue VW Bug. And that car was as old as me. Um, but, but he let me drive it. It wasn't mine. It wasn't mine, but he let me drive it. Now, so there were times that he said, hey, Dan, I really need you to take your sister to band practice. So I would take my sister to band practice because it was his car. So I had to do, I wanted to do what he said because I, I wanted to honor him for letting me use it. I, there were times he'd say, hey, I really need you to go to the grocery store to pick this up. So I would do it. Again, because the car wasn't mine, it was his. I had the privilege of driving it. I also got to take it to go and hang out with my friends. I got to drive that car to go to the movies. I got to drive that car to go to Bush Gardens. So I got to use it for the things that I wanted to use it for as well. It wasn't mine, but I got to use it. That's how we need to view our stuff. That God gives it to us. We get to use it for some of the things that we want. God delights in that. He's, he's the, our heavenly parent giving us these gifts that we get a chance to, to, to receive and to, to enjoy. And he loves it when we, when we get a chance to do that. But, but we also need to be faithful to use it for what he wants us to use it for. Because ultimately, it's not mine. It's his. So the second thing, and if you're taking notes, is that we are blessed by God to give extravagantly. Let me hear you say extravagantly. 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 Every now and then, just, you just get got to go crazy sometime with something that you give. To give in such a way that, that maybe blows people, people's minds. And people might even go to the point of saying, wow, that was a little irresponsible. But, but you were called to give it, and so you did it above and beyond. That, that's what this one um, woman did in Scripture. As you read the story, you find out that, that more likely she was, she was a prostitute. She had been forgiven by Jesus. And, and when she was in his presence, she lost control. She gave the most irresponsibly generous gift that you could ever imagine. Um, here's the story. It's recorded in Mark chapter 14, starting in verse 3. 
It says, Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head. Now, I don't, I don't know what nard is. It sounds kind of nasty to me. I don't know if I would want to pour it on my head. But it was valuable. It, it, was, it was valuable. Actually, it, it, it comes from a plant that's only found like in the Himalayas. And so it actually then was imported to, to Israel. So that was very, very, we're not talking Axe body spray here. All right. This was, this was the good stuff. This was the real good stuff. Um, and, and she broke the jar of perfume and poured it over Jesus' head. And then the story continues in, in verse 4. It says, Some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume, they asked. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly. Now think about this for a second. Think about what you make in a year. I don't know what that may be for you, um, but just think about it. Because to some degree, it's a, it's a chunk of change if you think about it all at once. And so a year's wages, this woman sees Jesus and she just loses control and she just pours the whole thing over his head. A year's wages. I've got to be honest, if I'm there, I'm probably maybe a little more in line with the, the guys at the table. Going, what were you thinking? Let me, let me give you some advice. You know, next time you got the expensive stuff, just open it up, take a little bit. Dab, dab, love you, Jesus. And, and, and then sell the rest, okay? Do, do something responsible with it. And, and it still expresses the same thing. But she doesn't. She just pours the whole thing. And, and everybody there is bothered by it. And Jesus says, do you realize y'all missed the point? He probably didn't say y'all. Um, <laughs> although he was from the southern part of Israel, so maybe he did. I don't know. Um, but here's what he goes on to say. He goes on to say, what she did is one of the most beautiful acts ever done, and it will be told about her for generations to come. Here we are 2,000 plus years later, and we're talking about it today. Sometimes you just have to give like that. you got to give like God has given to us, extravagantly. You give extravagantly. So God has blessed you to give joyfully, to give extravagantly. And then number three, we are blessed by God to give sacrificially. Let me hear you say sacrificially. 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 To give in such a way that you're not giving out of what's left over, but you're giving out of something you wanted, something you needed. You give in such a way that you, that you feel it, that it costs you something. It seems like whenever you go to Christian concerts these days, they're always connected with like Compassion International or World Vision or something like that where they, you can sponsor children. And one of the lines that they always use in promoting that is they say, if you just give up one of your fancy coffee drinks a week, you could sponsor this child for a year. And so that's, that's sacrificial giving. That's giving up something that you wanted in order to be able to do something else, to be generous for someone else. And that's the way that a, that a poor widow did in Scripture. It's a beautiful story. This woman who had nothing to live on, she, she walks into church, she opens up her little purse, she pulls out a penny, she takes the penny, she drops it in the offering bucket. And all the rich people are around going, what's up with that? That, that? that won't do anything. That doesn't help. And Jesus looks on and says, y'all miss the beauty of this moment. Here's what he said. Jesus said this in Mark 12, 43. He says, I tell you the truth. This poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions. This poor widow has given what? More. She's given more than, than all the others. How did, how, did, how did the others give? They gave out of their wealth. But what did she give out of? She actually gave out of her poverty. And she put in how much? She put in everything. Everything. Everything she had to live on. Think about that for a minute. When she dropped that penny in the bucket, she was putting in tomorrow's breakfast because she didn't have anything else. She gave everything. To put it kind of in our terms, bring it into our world, she reached under the mattress and took out all her cash. She broke up, broke open her piggy bank and gave it all. She busted into her 401k and she emptied it. She took out equity in her home and she gave it. She sold her home. That's kind of the equivalent in our language today. She gave all. How do I give? Well, you know, okay, well, I, 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 I need this much, and so I've got this much left over, and so I'll, I'll enjoy this much, and then I'll, I'll, give, I'll give that much. And I give, I give what I, what, what I want to give. I give what's easy to give. I give because I, I, I don't really want to feel it. I, I, don't want, I don't want it to hurt. I don't want to sacrifice. I've worked hard for what I have. But, but we, have to, we have to step it up. 
God is our provider. He's blessed us with more than enough. We got to step it up. I want to feel it. I want you to feel it. Because God, God is so faithful. So wherever you are along your journey of this, just pray and, and take that next step as to what it is that God may lead you to do. If, if you normally don't give anything, give something. Give something. If, if Maybe you give sporadically, just kind of when you feel you can afford it, when you want to, when you remember. Um, maybe you need to discipline yourself to give every week or every paycheck to do something like that. Maybe you need to set up a, an automatic payment so that it, it just comes out and you don't miss an opportunity. Um, I personally can't do the automatic payment thing because to me, the giving is, is part of an act of worship and I don't want to set my, my worship on autopilot. And so, so I, I, I have to do it every time. So what Shaney and I do, this is just an example of what we do. Um, hi, sweetie, by the way, she's watching online. Um, so uh, what, what we do is we, uh, we have our finance committee meeting. So my, my paycheck comes in and we, we have our finance committee meeting and the two of us sit down on the couch. First thing we do is we pray. We thank God for the blessings that he's given us, that we have an opportunity to even talk about where resources would go. And the second thing we do is pull out the phone and we get on the app and we do our giving right away. We take it right off the top because I don't want to, if, if I wait till later, then it's not going to, it may not happen. So we do it first thing because then, I, then we, we are confident, God has proved himself time and time again, that we will have exactly what we need with what's left over. That God's going to bless. If we give our first and our best, God is going to bless the rest. And, and he's going to take care of us. And he's going to provide. And he's going to do what he needs to do. And so we're, we're, just, we're just confident in that. So we, so we do that first, right off the top. Maybe God is calling you to, to sacrificial giving. Maybe he wants you to go above and beyond. Just to be uh, uh, transparent and, and open here. Um, uh, we, we've had a challenging year financially here at Edgewater. It, it's, been, it's been pretty rough uh, for, for all of us. Um, and we've, uh, so like our, our summer slump started in February. And, uh, and then we've been waiting for the seasonal bump to happen, and it just hasn't happened yet. And so uh, for, for five or six years now, the giving has trended up and to the right. And, and so we, we projected our giving along those same lines, and it just hasn't, it just hasn't happened this year. Okay, but um, and and I know there are many of you here today who would who would give if you know there's a need. You, I've heard people come up and go, "Man, I just wish I knew there was a need. I would give." Well, there's a need, <laughs> so so I'm I'm just telling you telling you right now. But but even in the midst of it, I mean, God has provided for us. We've kept the lights on. All right, we've we've been able to continue to serve our community in in amazing ways. God has continued to pour those types of resources into our hands so that we can pour them out into the community. We we've been able to help people who come to us with with a need um, again because God has God has provided in that way. But we found ourselves behind here at the end of the year. But here's how I want to approach this because I know that God is faithful and like I said, He's provided everything we need. Right, so, so I'm not going to stand up here today. I'm not putting a squeeze on anybody. Um, the, the verse in 2 Corinthians, what did it say? It said that our giving shouldn't come because we feel pressured. And so, so I'm not going to be the one who's going to pressure anyone to give. But I also don't want to stand in the way if God is calling you to do something. If God's calling you to give. We actually had, I mean, we had people come up last night who said, hey, you know, this has been on my heart. And, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. And so uh, that, that's been a, a great example for us. So what I want you to do is I want you to listen. I want you to listen to what it is that, that God is speaking to you, what, what he wants you to do. And, and, and then give cheerfully, joyfully, hilariously. I want to hear some laughter going out the door as folks are dropping stuff in the giving box. We want to give joyfully. And then you just, you just wait and see how God blesses you because you've been faithful to bless others. Now, maybe you feel like, well, you know, I, I would give. I, I would really love to give. That, that's, that sounds great. I know it's better to give than receive. But, you know, I, we're just not in a financial situation to be able to do that right now. Right now, I, I wish I could give more, but I feel like we're, we're under, under debt. I'm feeling a lot of weight from, this, from the debt that we have. And we're, we're paying people for the privilege of having a credit card. And if, and I, and if I got that taken care of, I'd be able to, to, to be more generous with that. If that's what you're saying today then God has answered your prayers. 
because starting in November, we're going to be having a class. We're going to be having a class. There's going to be a couple here at North, in Port Charlotte. They're going to be in Northport as well. And it's a, a class called uh, Freed Up From Debt. And it's a great class that, that helps teach some very practical biblical principles on, on how to be a good manager of the resources that God has given you so that you can get out of debt. And so I, I really want to encourage you to stop by the Get Connected Center down in the lobby. There's information down there. Like I said, it's starting in November, so it's coming up quick. So be sure to check that out. You'll see the information in your bulletin as well. Um, and because maybe even going to that class is kind of your first step as an offering of worship to God. Because you, you know you're ready to take that journey. You want to take that jump to be generous, but you feel like you can't now. Well, maybe that first step that you can take is going to that class and finding ways to get rid of that debt. And, and then you're going to see, again, just things are going to open up for you. You'll be able to breathe a little easier. You'll be able to feel more confident in how you're following Jesus. So I wanna, really want to encourage you, stop by and get connected with that class. So God is our provider. We have more than enough. And I got to tell you, that I would imagine that it kind of breaks the heart of God because, again, we want to pattern ourselves after his character and his generosity and giving nature is so much a part of who he is that I would imagine it breaks his heart when we don't give joyfully, when we don't give extravagantly, when we don't give sacrificially, when the reality is God has blessed us so much. And so, so may we become a church full of Jesus followers who are so radically generous that like that other verse that we looked at in 2 Corinthians, that, that people see the blessing that flows out of here into our community, that people go, wow, praise God. And this God that they serve must be incredible because it's amazing to see the blessings that just keep rolling out. I mean, our, our, our community can be transformed and people's hearts can be turned to God just through the generosity and, and our faithfulness to hearing God's call, to giving where it is that he wants us to give. May that be who we become. Please pray with me. God, thank you so much for, for your generosity, for the blessings that you pour out into our lives. God, we are so grateful for that. I pray that you'll help us to be able to uh, manage those blessings responsibly, that we'll be good stewards, that we will know that what we have isn't ours, but we receive it, and we, we get a chance to, to use it as you want us to use it. And yes, some of that will be on ourselves, but, but we also need to be ready to do whatever it is that you're calling us to do, to be able to give, to be able to bless others. And so God, I pray that, uh, that whatever that next step may be for us, that each one of us will, will maybe just say a simple prayer today of saying, hey, you know, God, show me what you want me to do. And God, I pray that you'll answer. I pray that you'll be faithful. I pray that you will uh, just show us what it is that you want us to do when it comes to how much we are blessed to be a blessing into the lives of others. And maybe you're here today and you, you heard me talking about the, the, the giving nature of God and how he, he loved us so much that he gave his, his only son Jesus to, to die on the cross for our sins so we could be restored into relationship with him. And maybe you're saying, you know, I've never, I've never received that gift. I've never taken that step across the line of faith to say, hey God, I thank you for what you've done and I, I want to follow you. Well, we want to give you an opportunity to do that today. And one of the ways we kind of mark the beginning of that journey is just through a simple little prayer. And so I'm going to pray it out loud, and I invite you to repeat it after me. And pray, dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sin. Please forgive me of all I've done wrong. Help me live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen.